Hi, it's Charlie McCann from Stan James. I welcome you to a preview of the second Ashes Test, which begins at Lord's 11am on Thursday. First thing to say in the aftermath of Cardiff, everybody said the momentum was with England, that Australia couldn't bowl Monty and James Anderson out. But as it turned out, punters have gone one way and one way only, and that is for the draw for the second test. Put it around about 11 to 8 on Monday, 5 to 4 yesterday, and now the even money shot that is rain forecast on at least the first day at Lord's Day, you know, whether you take any notice of weather forecast. Remember at Cardiff we were due a, a, a washout on the Saturday and of course it, it, we only lost the evening session there and in Cardiff. But the draw, that is what punters have latched onto, even money. Australia as a result 7-4 to four from 13-8, to 6-4 earlier in the week and England right out to 113. Yet this is the spin we had after Cardiff, is that the momentum was in England. You don't believe it, I don't believe it. We got six wickets in Cardiff, we've got to get 20 to win a test match. We got six wickets. Okay, the, the wicket didn't spin, but it seemed to spin an awful lot. For, not an awful lot, perhaps, but for Marcus North, he seemed to get more turn than Graham Swan and Monty Panasar, and that was our trump card. That's what we thought we'd have the advantage. Well, if we haven't got the advantage in the spin department, where have we? And I think punters are latched on to the best we can hope for is a draw. But if the Australian attack maybe wasn't, uh, Peter Siddle was very aggressive, Ben Hilfenhaus was steady. Mitchell Johnson, he, you know, he, he finished um, with three wickets in the first innings and three wickets in the second innings, but he didn't really fire, I don't think, as much as people think. It'd be interesting if Brett Lee is back. Brett Lee is a five to two shot to be top Australian bowler. Mitchell Johnson is a 15 to eight favourite. We've got 11 to four for Peter Siddle and five to two for Hilfenhaus. Uh, Horrid two bowled, I thought, quite well at Cardiff is the five to one. Outside of the main field, you've got um, a couple more of the outside of the all-rounders, rather, who I don't think will feature. England's top bat. Let's have a look at that. KP 100 to 30. He gave his wicket away in the first innings. Let's let's get it right. There's no way that uh, that sweep if he'd have uh, he should have pulled out of the shot. But he remains our top player. But as a result of being our top player, he's the batsman that they will target. He's the target. He's the bat. The baggy greens want. It's interesting. They think now that he may be vulnerable in and around the off stump first when he first gets to the crease. He could have easily been given out as well, LBW, in the first innings. And I'm not convinced KP is in this uh, rich vein of form that other people. Remember, he got two low scores in that warm up game that England had. I look elsewhere, I wasn't impressed with Ravi Bapara. I'm not convinced he is a test player. It comes into the game, I know you're on the back of three test centuries, but I thought he had his limitations exposed in Cardiff and he's overlooked as well. Alistair Cook at four to one. Again, I, I must say I'm not the greatest uh, fan of Alistair Cook, probably not aesthetically pleasing enough at the wicket. He just seems to me, again, vulnerable at the very top class and I'm just not convinced maybe that the Middlesex opener will be top bat as well. That kid takes down to the captain and Paul Collingwood. Paul Collingwood was seven to one. He probably shouldn't be seven to one. And uh, gut, real gut. That was real terrific innings both times. He's not the greatest Test player who's ever, but a wonderful average Collingwood. Some people would say he argued, of course, he gave it away at the death in Cardiff. But uh, it's Andrew Strauss for me. I know bounced out in the first innings. I thought he got a good one for Mitchell Johnson then. But I think Andrew Strauss is a real Test. Uh, opening batsman, and I think uh, he will. You know, I think he will step up to the mark on his home ground at Lords, and at seven to two, he looks the value for me. Ricky Ponting, 130 favourite for the top Australian bat, Simon Cattage, 100 to 200 makers there. I think Mr. Cricket, I think Mike Hussey, he's the one who missed out. He missed out at Cardiff, and he'll be he'll be beating himself up over that. He loves batting, and I think Mike Hussey at four to one, very well backed with us to be top series bat. You may have done your dough if you that he's got 100, almost 150 to make up with Ricky Ponting, of course, in the top series Australian batsman. But Mike Hussey, I think if he gets in this this uh, second test at Lords on what is generally regarded as such good wicket then I think Mike Hussey may well reward followers around about 4-1. We haven't got a good record. Let's get right against the Australian 70 odd years since we, since we beat um, Australia at Lords. Remember when we won the Ashes in 2005, we got beat at Lords, which was the first test and went on to win. This year we've got a draw in 2005. We got six wickets now. That is the bottom line, we got six wickets. Freddie Flintoff is due to have a press conference later today to talk about his fitness. He looks, that would appear to me, that Flintoff is at least out of the second test and unfortunately it may be more severe than that. What do we do? Do we bring in Bell at six, prior to bat seven, go with four bowlers? That doesn't win the test match and I think that's what people have latched onto. Evens, I think, the draw is the best that England can hope for. I worry 
but I do think that maybe that 7-4, the Australians, to win the second test at Lords may represent the value.